Hello everybody, I'm SJM and welcome to Create Above and Beyond, a mod pack um, designed and curated by the uh, creators of the Create mod. Uh, it's a mod that I've kind of always wanted to get in in some of the other mod packs that I've played, but never really did because of A, its complexity level, it's kind of, you know, uh, seems a little bit on the on the lower end of the uh, technological mm -hmm. scale, but um, and then on the uh, and the more of the um, you know less uh, less advanced type of size and side and the the um, the mod itself is pretty complex, so a lot of the things are are you know take a lot of thought and you really got to kind of get. Uh, yourself your head wrapped around how all the mechanics of it and everything work and it's it's got a really interesting um book to go with it like all the the guide for it is in game and will show you how to do everything but it doesn't tell you outright so it's kind of always intimidated me so this pack was kind of a perfect jumping off point to kind of get into it uh, not only from the fact that because it is a create based mod that everything's based around that uh, but it's also uh, expert level because the um, the devs have made some of the recipes a little bit more complex. So learning it here and then going and using it somewhere else where the recipes will be easier will be you know a little bit uh, will be a little bit more rewarding when you're playing it elsewhere. Uh, so you kind of first thing you want to do when you get started in this Mac I, pack, I would definitely suggest getting out and uh, exploring. So. Um, this first episode, I'm just going to talk about all of the things you kind of want to do in the early game to get yourself going in the pack and um, and a couple of tips and tricks maybe on how to build a first couple of things just to make your life a little bit easier so that you can get your uh, put your uh, thinking juices towards actual um, getting things automated rather than but how does everything work. So yeah, when you start off there, you kind of want to get out into the world and do a bunch of exploring. I started way up here on uh, this little island here. I uh, spotted this ship over here, sunken ship, which was kind of partially exposed. So I went up there, got that, and it had a uh, buried treasure. So I started off good with getting some iron and gold and some of the other... Uh, some other resources, food, like the fish and salmon, so started off the pack pretty good. Uh, then came, started coming down here, found another ship here, and then these buildings you kind of definitely want to investigate as well, which is, I've got an example of one of them behind me right here, so they've got these kind of brick tops, and uh, they go down into a little bit of a, um, a mine shaft type of thing. They've got railway carts and stuff down there. Um, but just be careful uh, when going underground because there's this broken stone. So you, because we do have the tool tips in there, if you're just looking at the ground, if it says broken stone, don't walk on it because it will break underneath your feet uh, and can lead to death in some parts. Uh, there's another structure that you kind of want to be on the lookout for just up on the top of this hill there. So just give me a second to swing around and climb up there. But it'll kind of give you a little bit of a head start into getting some of the um, items from Create. So this is kind of like a broken down windmill if you'll take it because you'll find uh, the windmill um, base part as well as a couple of couple of pieces that you can sort of use to get some contraptions going uh, at the start uh, and then this is kind of what that broken stone looks like so if you walk on it, it breaks out from underneath your feet so just be careful of that that nasty stuff there because sometimes there's lava underneath sometimes there's a big cave underneath this one's not too bad because there's just water down there but you know you never can always sometimes tell what's down there right so uh, let me uh, get back to my base and uh, I'll rejoin you there. So as with most mod packs or mods or Minecraft in general, you want to get your food going pretty quickly. So got some bunch of different stuff going on here. 
Uh, and uh, where did he go? Oh, I see the flies buzzing around. Do you think he's stuck in the water over here again? Ah, there he is. This little guy. It's a little bit of a, a new thing. He's a straw golem, and he'll actually do some auto harvesting for you. So you just put like an inventory down in the vicinity, and then he'll harvest your stuff for you because there isn't any um, like you can't like uh, right click on the on the crop to harvest it. You'd have to break it and then replant it, which when you're doing wheat, you end up with tons and tons of extra seeds. So definitely suggest getting that little straw golem, and he'll give you a, a little bit of chump change to uh, spend as well because in the mod pack there is a money system which you can not only use to get money but also use to um, so if you to buy things so in here if I had five silver and a rubber duck I can buy a duck spawn egg and uh, this is repeatable so I could do this as many times as I wanted uh, so on and so forth so other things you know you can buy food if you wanted to if you've got money but uh, and then for the making for making money there's um, you know kill a uh, three pillagers and trade in the om ominous banner and then you will get uh, some money out of it so there's a decent little way to make money and spend money so over farming or over fishing over harvesting cattle and stuff that'll all get you um, you know it doesn't just sit there and rot in your chest because you can use it to make money at some point uh, so let's go so yeah tinkers is kind of one of the first things you want to get into because you will have to get down and do some mining and when you go mining when you uh, break the ores you're gonna get this crushed iron ore instead of getting the iron blocks and then if you take a look at what happens when you smelt it you get three iron nuggets when you for each one you get so you're only getting a third of a of a ingot every time you do that so you kind of want to get your way into using the create um, mod itself to kind of start your ore doubling and tripling um, pretty quickly so tinkers is the one of the best ways and you do kind of want to get yourself the little smelter set up going here and basically um, you also if you got the millstone that'll help get you a little bit along the way as well because if we see in the guidebook here in the metallurgy tab this will kind of explain the process of getting your ores so you you get your ore. If you have a tool, you'll just get one of the crushed ore out of it. If you've got fortune, you'll get extra. Everybody knows these basic mechanics. That'll get you your crushed ore. You have different ways to process it. You just put it in your uh, furnace. You'll get three, ink, or three nuggets out of it. Um, once you get up to this stage there, you can actually get 9 to 27 nuggets out of it right away but then you can go the other route with milling crushing or pulverizing which will get you different outputs there so you're going from one to one you'll get three um, dust out of each crushed ore so we're tripling there automatically because each dust can then go um, into the smelter to get you one back out of it so you'll get three out of it if you go that route but then you could also use washing to get there or if you do the tinkers um, melter then you can get three more so this we're already going with this setup from one uh, three nuggets all the way up to nine nuggets because we're tripling and tripling so there we're already getting up to one ingot so a little setup like this here uh, should have a hopper going from this input chest into the millstone I'm just using it elsewhere at the moment and then hopper into your melter here just with some coal there and then you just need a lever there to automate the pouring out of the uh, ingots and into your chest down there. Uh, also note that the Tinker's books are all split up into different ages, so Stone Age, Basic Metal Age, Advanced Metal Age, and then there's uh, another Metal Age uh, after that as well. And you can combine all four books to get into one regular book uh, at the end for the end game uh, stuff there. 
So getting into the create machines, I've kind of got them all spaghettied over here. Uh, you'll be using water with water um, wheel power at the beginning. Just make sure that your water is pouring over the side where the um, blades come up. So the blades aren't perfectly straight on here. Let me just grab my bucket and I can show you. Uh, let me just delete that water. So you see here how they're shaped like that. You want to have the water coming over this side of it there. And the water wheel broke for some reason. So. There we go. Get it back up there. And just get the water flowing back again. So that'll power all of your machines, all these different things. So you've got pressers, um, you've got saws, and this is the one thing that I want to show you also for the early game. The wrench is super handy. You just shift and left click and you can break it automatically. Um, mixers and then you've got these cog wheels as well so if you if you take some rotational power hey let me out there doesn't want to let me out so I'll just sneak out this way I guess uh, if you want to increase the speed you can go from a big one to a small one and that'll speed it up because this uh, mixer there it wouldn't run just off of the big this the one with a regular speed so i had to speed it up a little bit to get it working uh, and so on and so forth uh, the reason why i wanted to grab this saw is to show you that this is basically when you're going out to get your wood at the start of the game this is the one thing that you want to have so if you put it down it just kind of goes down on its side so but if you shift click it it'll place it the opposite way and you just need this hand crank on there and it's supposed to take down the whole tree slightly embarrassing maybe it doesn't work on two by two variants maybe that grass had something to do with it Trial and error? Nope. Not sure. But anyways, I harvested lots and lots and lots of single trees with this guy, so I'll just I'll show you what it does if it's the last thing I do in this video. See, like that, that's how it's supposed to work. So I guess it doesn't work on two by two trees, so just be aware of that. It's not gonna work on your big spruce or your, or, or, your uh, or your dark oaks. But the other thing that it can do, if you are so inclined to build your tree farm in such a way, build your trees close enough to each other I think this will work because I usually just build them in a straight line so this forgot to shift place shift place that and you can actually chop down multiple trees at the same time. So see, I chopped down both of those trees together because they were linked up with some logs. And even though they were different kinds of logs as well, so I got dark oak out of it as well as spruce. So just a tip there for your early game uh, wood farming because you are going to need a lot of wood to get started in the pack. So. Definitely the first thing that you should be getting is that uh, that saw so that you can get your your wood together so you can create your uh, andesite machines. I almost forgot there in your early game exploring you definitely want to raid a village and get a smithing table and a stone cutter. These two things are going to be very valuable because that's how you build most of your basic 
um, machine. So the basic or the the base um, thing is this andesite machine. So it takes an andesite casing, which is a log and an andesite alloy. Andesite alloy is made with this algal brick and some andesite, either cobblestone or the cooked version. Algal brick is a cooked of algal blend, which is made from kelp and clay balls. And then you can get into, you can, you can increase your efficiency once you start getting the machine. So the mixer there, you kind of double up what you get from the shapeless crafting there. Uh, but the andesite machine there also takes these kinetic mechanisms which needs a saw, more andesite alloy, a log, and one of these cog wheels. These cog wheels take up a bunch of buttons so there that's two logs worth of buttons right there just to get a couple of cog wheels so you can see where I'm going with all of this wood that you need. Then you take this andesite machine and uh, you either put it in the smithing table along with one of these other parts to start making these the machines. So to make a f encased fan you need a propeller. To make the mechanical saw you'll need the saw blade. So on and so forth. Uh, but you can also put it in the stone cutter to make some of the other um, handy dandy things that they don't actually tell you about in the uh, in the guidebook so mechanical harvesters for collecting plants and crops um, the funnels which can help you um, automate pulling things out of inventories storage interface which helps with um, automation as well these are pretty two pretty important things that you're going to need to get um, and as well the the tunnels you can do for multi things and what was the other one? Strainer base. This is how you get lots of clay because you will need obviously clay for doing um, your strainers and you don't want to have to be going all around in the water looking for your clay all the time so these strainers they collect you up a bunch of different a bunch of sand and clay balls with the base strainer so that's how you and you can actually change sand uh, with the encased fan into clay as well so this is pretty much all clay here because we need lots of clay to make all of the uh, andesite machine frames and once you get kind of the hang of all of that, you're definitely going to want to um, set up this little setup here. So you've got some deployers uh, and some belts. And the uh, trick for your belts is to make this uh, arboreal extractor and get some resin out of the tree. You put the resin into the presser with the basin below it, and that'll get you the rubber because in the the base create you just make um, the belts out of dried kelp but it's changed in the pack because it's an advanced pack so that's the trick there you can also use flowers and water but that's real cumbersome for going out and getting flowers all the time or even if you get like a, a rose bush and you got lots of bone meal or phyto grow to grow it it's still pretty tedious so definitely suggest doing it passively just kind of letting this work in the background while you do it and then every once in a while you'll come by grab a bucket load of the resin throw it into your presser and you'll get rubber to make your belts uh, but yeah three high three long belts kind of need to do a, i kind of needed to do a little bit of gearing here just to get the power the way i wanted it to work so a couple of gearboxes and those three deployers across here and then you'll put uh, the andesite on each of these deployers because if we take a look at these kinetic mechanisms there's a sequenced assembly so whereas this takes up you know lots of wood here wood there and then andesite alloys in the sequence here, basically one slab plus two andesoid alloys will get you your kinetic mechanism instead of uh, all that extra wood that you needed the other ways. You do need to get a saw on one of these hands, but then just andesoid alloys in the other, which I believe I have this all set up here. Uh, so a chest with one of these andesoid 
funnels that I was talking about earlier. And then we'll grab some slabs. I've only got 12 there, but it's enough to kind of show the point. And then you can kind of just throw those in there. Oh, I've got it turned off because uh, if I turn both of these things on at the same time, we get overstressed. And I can see that because I've got these engineer goggles. Make sure you make these because it helps you find points. Uh, but uh, basically I just have to kind of turn this side off. So I just use my wrench to turn my uh, turn my pipe and then I can get this side going as well. And then these automatic things popping off, making my uh, kinetic mechanisms because you're going to need tons of these. They take eight to make each one of these machines that you're going to be making and you're going to need lots of these machines, right? Uh, especially when you're going to set up some of your uh, auto crafting. So uh, this is the definite one there. The other thing that you can do is I had my saw set up over here a moment ago, which I can do. And I want to show you this because there's a real pain in the butt over here with the saw. Get up here, set it down like that. Okay, there we go. Now I'll need a plank. Uh, because what'll happen is you can throw some logs into this machine and it will saw them down automatically. So if I take a look at the use on these and go over to the the sawing, the saw will cut it down into a stripped log. And then if we go further from there, the sawing on the stripped log gives us planks. And then if we look at what we do from the sawing on the planks, is that it will give us slabs. Now the one thing that it doesn't show you in JEI here is that the planks will also give you tables and stools and this is how I've ended up with this table here and all those tables over there so it's a real pain in the butt so there is a little box on there with the recipe filter thing so uh, when you get to that point so we'll just stick a log in here I'll just show you the process oh I already had a stripped so yeah Oh yeah, and I've got this broken, right? So we'll break this one here and turn it on on this side again to have this side working. So there the stripped log goes through. We'll take the stripped log. This is, happens no problem. And the stripped log comes out with a plank. And then if I throw this plank in there, there's a chance that I will get a table one of those little chairs or slabs but if I put in the slab there in the recipe filter and the slab doesn't actually go in there so I just always keep my slab kind of hanging out near where my saw is this will guarantee that I get the slabs out of it instead of more tables or chairs or all of those things so a couple of nice little frustrating thing or way to avoid some frustration there because yeah that was uh, definitely not um, not too happy that I kind of ended up with so many of those things after I made the mistake. I can understand making the mistake the first time and missing it uh, when surfing through JEI, but yeah, the the second and third time not so fun. So let me just uh, give me one quick second here to go over. I've got lots of minecarts and stuff here because I'm that's how I'm going to be doing some of my automation. Um, yeah, and we'll take a look at the first automated contraption that I've got set up over here. So this is going to be my kelp farm for collecting kelp. Uh, we've got these storage interfaces which actually work through the block, so I don't have to worry about it there. Uh, I've got these harvesters, and this is pool here is too deep so that, um, you know, I shave off the top level 
and then uh, when it comes around it will deposit everything into this storage interface. We'll go through the hopper and into this chest here. So it took me a while to get this all working good but I've got it working. Uh, we'll just go down in here and show you. So I've got an um, because uh, of the water I can't see what it is but there's a windmill bearing down there and then some radial chassis on top of that to make the um, windmill bearing work we do need to have some of these sails on it so I've got and you need a minimum of eight so I've just got four on this side and four on that side and the way these sails work they don't actually break the bottom level when this thing is working uh, so just to note there, uh, note that they've got some sticky on that side, so slime balls, or if you make some super glue, then you can make the uh, sides of these sticky so that they work. You do need to have an inventory somewhere so that it has some place to put the collect to put the things that it collects while it's farming. And then the storage interface will, doesn't have to be exactly attached to that. It'll automatically work even across those that space there and it is it does go pretty slow but uh, that's because it was dumping over there but you can see there it's just going along shaving off all of the and you can ride on it if you like to as well but shaving off all that kelp and then it'll collect in that chest can't open the chest while the machine is working but that's that's fine doesn't matter too much and then when it completes a full rotation, the uh, interface will work with the other interface and drop things down in, drop all of the kelp down into the uh, chest down there. And then we just kind of have to, you know, move the items from there onto the next stage, which would be putting the kelp into a mixer, like that guy right there, um, along with some... Clay. And like I said, I'm getting so there that has worked its way around, and now you see the kind of the, the hoppers getting all of the kelp and then depositing it into this chest, and that's all the all the kelp that I just collected from that one round roundabouts going into the chest. And in the time it takes to do that, some of it started to grow. It doesn't have to be super max efficiency. That's why this going around at such a slow speed isn't such a super big deal. But I'm just going to leave it off now so I don't collect way too much because I don't really need all of it now while I'm getting the rest of it all set up. But yeah, that's the first piece of automation from there. We get that kelp transported into a mixer. Like I said, we've got these... Uh, these strainers to automate the collection of clay and like I said because mostly it collects the sand but if we take the sand and I'll just show you because it is working over here oh I forgot I took the water out right for the other dem demonstration breaking all of my things for the sake of the video but over here if you've got the fan and it's blowing into some water and then that will um, if I wasn't standing so close to it, it takes a few seconds for it to work and that has now turned into a clay ball so that's how I'll use the strainer to automate throwing it onto one of these fans turning it into clay, then we'll have clay plus kelp to make our algal blend to get us the andesite alloy, which is the basis for a lot of the crafting past that. Then the last automatic thing I kind of want to show up, so same thing with the encased fan, if you have it blowing through some um, lava, basically it will smelt things for you. So we'll just take one of these dark oak logs 
Um, how far did I throw that dark oak log there? So I throw it on there and it kind of blows it along and at the end it turned into a piece of charcoal. So I've automated this by setting up an inventory with the one of the, another one of these andesite funnels and it's great because this drops it just kind of one at a time and then that'll blow those all along there cook them up nicely and have I I don't know. They should have all ended up back in there. And I've got more visitors, so I should have slept, but... Stop making noises and ruining my video. <laughs> I think I just had too many... But yeah, but where did the because didn't end up there. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. Anyways, it, it usually worked good. Must only not be working because I'm on camera, of course. But uh, yeah, that's kind of all of the quick and easy things I wanted to go over. Yeah, get your straw golem for doing automatic farming. Um, set up your things to get some, your machines to start getting some of the um, efficiency out of your thing out of your uh, your supplies so that you're not burning through them super quick and always have to go down on mining missions all the time. There's lots of andesite around so you can always mine that up but there is also a way to generate it um, but you'll find out about that in the pack and then yeah finding yourself a nice little mining mission to get uh, or a nice little cave system to do a whole bunch of mining because branch mining was definitely not very uh, rewarding. I did a couple of branch mines and wasn't finding really very much at all because the ores, they're not super, there's not a lot of them out there, right? Like all of these turned up dry. There's the second one, and I think most of that was coal actually that I, that I dug up. So yeah, finding the cave systems is definitely the way to go for, uh, for mining. Anyways, I think I've hit on all the points I want to talk about in this beginner video. I hope you enjoyed. Thumbs up if you did. Leave some comments if there are some obvious things that I missed. Uh, sacks here can help you when you're doing some exploring if you find them. If you also find some, uh, some flax out there, you can make them. But I just never found any flax in my initial exploration. Because I'd really like to have some because I'm getting held back on doing some things because of the amount of string that I have. And I don't have a whole lot. So yeah, flax would be a super important one to find on top of your carrots, your potatoes, your wheat. Uh, rice is a little bit handy there because you'll need... Um, rice for making straw, straw which you'll need to make the strainers, but the other thing that you can do, yes I wanted to touch on this for sure, is that um, this iron knife from Farmer's Delight and breaking grass is your best bet for getting straw. Instead of waiting for rice to grow all the time, it doesn't happen every time, but that is definitely your best way for getting straw. And you're going to need your straw for your strainers. Uh, I, I'm going to need to find a way to automate that because, yeah, I need uh, going to need a lot of straw for doing the uh, the basis for the strainers. So I'll figure that out at some point. But yeah. Uh, once again, going to wrap it up here before I ramble on too much further anymore. I appreciate you all, and we will see you in the next one.